Hello, 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 Niyama Shang here, and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey here today. Uh, I'm excited to be here in the Outliers Edge podcast, where we're really focusing on this overall theme of making a world of difference, making a world of difference. Uh, and to help expand upon that, expand upon that here, uh, I have the pleasure of being in conversation with Janaea Barnes. Janaea, uh, it's wonderful to have you on the podcast. It's great to be in relationship with you. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be here. I know that we're going to show up with some really special nuggets that are going to come from deep inside that are going to surprise people in a powerful and positive way. Yeah, I like that because like my goal is to be surprised as well. Like it's one of, one of the things I like to do in, in, uh, in my conversations here is to like be prepared enough to to play but like I've also recognized like in my decades of life here I'm I'm, I'm always ready you know <laughs> like so uh let, let's let's play with a bit of surprise as well uh in a bit I want to just give people a chance to get to know you here um I know you have an incredible podcast be be the wolf be who you were born to be you know and so I want us to start off here because like we got a chance to connect beforehand and I'm like if, any, if anyone's listening right now, like take the time, just go subscribe to this podcast, go listen, because uh, I can already like, like the alignment is already there, you know? Um, I like doing things like this. Like when I talk to someone and they like, and they light me up and I'm like, I think people need to spend more time with you. I'm going to just like directly put that like front and center, right? But there's so much more to you than, than like what I've just captured here. So do me a favor here. Let me know a little bit more about you. Like um, I would say professionally and personally. Ooh, well, professionally, I love to help people. And I focus a lot on helping people that are stuck in jobs that they can't quit, that they hate. And I know so many of you out there, like that drudgery, that Monday morning drudgery. It's like, oh God, is the weekend over? And you feel stuck. And I think I know a lot of people that they feel so stuck. They're dealing with horrible bosses. They're dealing with difficult coworkers, impossible workloads, all of this stuff. It's overwhelming. They feel like they have to have their job. They are so stressed out, exhausted. They cannot even find the energy to get another job. And it doesn't even matter because every job they've had ends up being the same stuff. And so I help people break out of that so that they can keep the job if they want to, but feel good at work. And when you feel good at work, it takes so much of your time that when you actually feel good at work, it ripples out into everything else. You have more time for your community. You can show up for your family. You can get back to the gym. All of those things that you say you want to do, but you don't have the energy for, they become feasible and they become want to. It's not this thing in the back of your head that says have to. So that's professionally. Personally, I was not always this happy, vibrant person that you see here. Okay, when I was three, I was this happy, vibrant person, but I had quite a few twists and turns and traumas and crazy things along the way. And I really spent my life feeling like everything was hard. I'd been through a lot and, you know, I could tell these resilient stories and survivor stories of all these different crazy traumas that I've been through. But the bottom line is I just always felt miserable. I felt, I put on a good face. I was really good at that. <laughs> Can't let anybody know how terrible things are inside because I thought there was something wrong with me. It didn't seem like anyone else felt that way. Like everybody, I mean, most people are putting on that mask, right? They're not being who they truly are and they're masking this pain and this hurt inside. And I just couldn't, it felt dangerous to be who I was. And, and I mean, it was growing up, it was dangerous to be who I was. I hear you say that, man, like, uh, I have my own levels of just like, really understanding that, you know, like, if, if you see me as me, like, uh, I, I get, I want to hear more about it, but I, just, I do have a question for you. Like, the way that I, when I hear that it becomes visceral for me, right? Like, 
uh, and the danger felt like it was like in multiple places. Like if you, if I was who I was, like maybe I wouldn't like be killed on the spot, but my, like it, it was a life and death situation, you know? Um, and it's like, it was like the livelihood of me might go. Like if, if, if I was really me, I might lose my job. I might lose my friends. I might lose like other places. So you're taking me right to that right now. Uh, I feel you on this. I feel you, feel you strongly. Thank well, you for that. And that's so much what the Be the Wolf, Be Who You Were Born to Be podcast is about. And of course, it's a side effect of the work that I do with my clients. But we have this place where, you know, your job is your livelihood. If you don't have money coming in, you won't have a roof over your head in from of the visceral place of if I don't have friends, if my family rejects me, all of that. When you were born, you were helpless. And instinctually inside our nervous system, we know that we must be loved or else we will die. And so that need for belonging, that need to be loved is life and death. It is literally life and death. Even you can sit there and say to your friend, like, well, just just walk away from that guy. He's not treating you well. Just walk away. But inside the nervous system, for many people, it is, it feels like life and death, just like you said. And so it doesn't matter if you had a childhood like mine where you might suffer physical harm if you spoke up or if you had an emotion it doesn't matter if you had that or if your parents were ignoring you when you needed their help it's still that same sense of life and death oh my goodness are they going to leave me do they not love me And if they don't love me or like me, I will be on my own and I'm four years old and I don't have the capabilities to survive on my own. So when we're at work and we're putting on that mask, trying to make sure that everybody likes us, our nervous system is looping back to some previous wound from when we were overwhelmed with emotion, with fear that we were going to not survive because somebody was going to walk out or abandon us or exile us, right? Get fired, get laid off. It's the same fear. It's the same trauma. It's a, it like, as you say, like I, I got to a point in my life where I recognized that my number one fear was being alone. So as, as you're saying this, I'm like, like it's uh it's, it's, especially poignant because I'm like uh I feel it you know I feel yeah. I feel it here so like walk me through here because we're, we're going to be exploring a lot of different things about like what makes you like I'll, I'll say an outlier what makes you like what like like it feels like you've had the experience you've grown in different ways around it you have different tools you help your clients also like navigate like the internal and external like like the internal like uh nervous system challenges matching that with the external like goals that they have when, when it comes to like the career with their job so on and so forth um i want to spend a little bit of time then like i want i do want to get into like the tools and like some of the things that people can do but i want to get a sense as to like for you like uh how this like actually played out here like so share yeah share with me here like because i'm not i'm not going to know like the the specific moment here or like the specific story that might be might be applicable but like take me to the place where you started to like uncover or like to see for yourself, like, wait a minute, this was the way that I'm operating does not have to be the way that I keep going through life. I love that reference point. And I love it because people always say like, oh, tell the story of, you know, your hero's journey of all of that thing. But what you're talking about is that realization that, oh, it doesn't have to be like this. And I've got to tell you, this is actually kind of a cute story. Mm. I was on, I was on this call with Les Brown and some other people. And he was talking to this woman about, there was somebody in your life. I can't do a good Les Brown, you know, that big, like hearty voice. There was somebody in your life that made you believe that 
something else was possible. Something different from this life that you have now was possible. That's my best Les Brown. Yeah. Um, anyway, and she was like, no, there was nobody. My life was terrible. Everything was terrible. No good role models, nothing. And so, of course, I'm here pondering the question, who in my life? Because I sure as hell wasn't my mom. <laughs> She did the best she could with the resources she had. She didn't, uh, she was not very well resourced. But so I'm thinking, who could it have been? And then it dawned on me. So I was five years old and we were coloring Easter eggs, which was one of my favorite things to do. And the phone rang and it was one of my mom's friends who also had kids around my age. They were friends. So she called and asked if I wanted to see the Superman movie. And I saw the Superman movie before, but I had no idea that it was something you could see again, that you could actually see this magical thing, this movie, because I didn't really grow up with TV or watching movies, this thing again, and so I was so excited about that prospect. I gave up coloring Easter eggs, which was I had been looking forward to for like a month every day. When are we going to color Easter eggs? When are we going to color Easter eggs? But that movie, seeing Superman fly, seeing Superman be strong, seeing Superman do things that everybody else said was not possible made me believe that it was possible to have something different that made me believe that anything was possible. And I think that belief was so deeply embedded that while the layers of trauma and stuff and all of this terrible stuff and good stuff too happened in my life, that there was this thread that always kept me seeking. I would try, I tried everything. I mean, I spent 20 years trying to figure out how to feel good and I tried it all. <laughs> I did it all so you all don't have to do it. <laughs> um, but I did that and I think that thread, that knowing that something bigger and better was possible, that anything was possible is the only thing that made me try again and again. And again, and they say that with, with success, one of the keys to success is that you have to believe, believe, like fully believe that it's possible because that is what will keep you trying again and again and again. And I know so many people that are just stuck in this place. This is all there is. I've tried to do things and make things better, but I keep coming back to the same place. And this is all there is. So they resign themselves to this is all there is. And if that's what you believe, that's what you're gonna get. Yeah, it's it's cool that you took a suit. Thank you here. Like the place of possibility, right? Uh, and knowing that that it's possible. And like as I think about this here as my own outlier journey and think about like what is was taking place the component of even just like knowing that that is a thing like knowing that that like th wait there's a way i can go watch this movie again like as you say it i have a i have a three-year-old right now um and as you say it it really helps put me in a place of like like we don't even know like it's hard to even fathom what it is that other people don't know or like everything like like what is still new for people right um and as I hear you say this, it just takes me to that place of possibility. Um, and one of the questions I would ask you here is like, is in that space, like, it's like you have to believe that it's possible. If you haven't seen it, or if your life experience up until this point has not like demonstrated that it is possible, like you talked about, like I've gone, I've tried, you know, uh, like how do you like lean in or, or recommend to your clients, like start to either to start building in that, degree of possibility so that the belief can also come in, in with it. Well, you have to understand that what how you've been examining the world is through a very narrow lens. I'll, I'll get a little technical here for a second. Yeah, bring it. So our brains 
process 11 million bits of information per second. Everything you've ever seen, experienced, it's all in your subconscious mind. But you are only aware, consciously aware of 60 to 120 of those bits. So from 11 million bits, everything gets filtered down and your subconscious mind is here are the things that I think is important to you. These 60 to 120 bits. And your mind, your subconscious mind likes certainty. So it knows that you're alive right now. Your subconscious mind, its job is to keep you alive. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So, and it knows that you're alive right now. So therefore, everything you believe, everything you think, everything you do must be working. And anything outside of that is not a guarantee that you will be alive. So let me give you these 60 to 120 bits. We're going to pick these same bits out of every second for you to pay attention to. So the reason you have an experience Something different is because your mind is trying to keep you safe. And you're technically safe right now. You're technically alive. I mean, you might not feel it in your heart and soul, but your body is technically alive. So therefore, doing what you're doing is keeping you alive. And we're going to keep filtering and making sure you only notice the things that are the same because that is what's going to ensure that you're alive. And so to get something different, we all know that you have to do something different. And it's not comfortable. It is not comfortable because your mind's like, we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. And the outcome is uncertain. That is not certainty. You might die. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. so in my, when people say, in my experience, this has never happened. And it's because your brain is filtering for to create the same thing because what you've experienced has kept you alive. And so if you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. And all those little voices that say, I don't know if I'm capable. I don't know if I'm good enough. What if they don't like me? All of that stuff is your brain trying to keep you safe. And so we can change that relationship with that self-talk a little bit and you can be like, oh, hello, hi. Oh, I'm so glad you're trying to keep me safe. Thank you for that. And so often those little parts of ourselves just need to be heard. And they're basing, they're basing their, what they're trying to warn you about uh, something that happened when you were five years old, when you know a schoolyard bully pushed you down or when your mom was stressed out and yelled at you and, and these things, these emotionally overwhelming moments in our life replay, like I can't go talk to this authority figure. I can't go talk to my boss because he, he's kind of like my dad. He's an authority figure. And if he yells at me, then you're stuck feeling. I'm sure you all have had that point where some boss that you had yelled at you or snapped at you and you felt like you were six years old, like, this moment where you're just this little kid and you can't speak up for yourself. You feel so small because your brain has looped you back. And it's like, that's, that's the same thing. That's totally the same thing. Filtering for that authority figure. Can't make him mad. Never stand up for yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it because you might die. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot that's flowing through me as you as you're saying this here, Janae. Like the one of them is I I just really appreciate your like the fact that you keep the most important thing the most important thing, right? Like, and it's not it's not this like a, a side side story of like this is life or death. It's like let's actually hold this with and honor this at the level that it is. Like like it might other people might dismiss it. Other people might be like, just get over it, whatever it is. But what I one of the things I enjoy about being in, in conversation with you is that like you hold the, the most important thing as sacred. You're like, look, if we do not address this as a life or death like like issue, we will not come up to it with the amount of energy or like or whatever is necessary to actually be able to create something different. 
So I want to, I want to just like acknowledge that. And that's some, like something that I don't think I don't experience it often enough where people like give the space to the, to the fact that we're operating in, in this, this way. So first, just thank you for that. And to the whole thing, the world of difference, every single one of us is different. Every single one of us has had different experiences. So those things that are life and death in our nervous system are different for me versus for you. We may have some similarities, right? Authority figure, dad yelling at us. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that one. But every single person is going to have different experiences. And so when somebody is sitting there telling you, you should just get over this, they can't fully understand what it's like to be inside of you, inside of your body. And so, you know, there's such a place of we have to, oh, just just consistency. I just did a, a podcast episode on consistency, but you know, you have these success grades, be consistent, be consistent, just do the consistent things, have a morning routine. What people don't understand is that, yes, that stuff will definitely create results, but the consistency that most people are running is the subconscious life and death fear of avoiding things uh, I, I take it like uh, like I take it that you're like let's help you create something like if you don't see this system playing out for you it's going to consistently play out in ways that like you may not know that it's running you but it's running you know yeah. uh and it's it's like like you said that, that I was thinking about this here um it's like there's 11 million bits of information being being uh, coming in. Uh, the 50 to 60 that you're seeing, you might think, or that you that you take in, you might think this is me making a decision, but 10 million of it might still be that that like story that that's playing out, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, but yeah, because it's like the subconscious mind, which is out of your conscious awareness, yeah. is deciding what you should be aware of. Yeah. It's it's interesting too because like because well you had said something earlier you said like in my experience right and for some reason when you said that it like what what got me thinking was you know it, like in the context of the subconscious mind like filtering what what we take in and what we become aware of it's like it like it is very very possible that in your experience the other things take place as well but you, but you're just not actually like taking that in and allowing that to add to your story. Exactly, exactly. And that's why so much of the work I do is so powerful because it changes the filtering system. Yeah. When you change the filtering system, your brain is letting you become aware of different things. Yeah. So if, if somebody if somebody had a person that traumatized them that had a voice very similar to mine they would turn this podcast off immediately but if we rewired that filter or healed that trauma they'd be able to listen to the podcast just fine mm -hmm. so by dealing with some of these life or death things that are happening in your nervous system it expands the possibilities in your world it makes you closer to superman yeah uh like it, when you say expanding possibilities that's like that's for me i'm someone that's just like like let's be able to get it all right um yeah. and and what i'm hearing here is like it's like there's an element of like just real freedom that can take place um and just just even just being in the experience of it right you're like you can listen to the podcast you know uh it's like it's like you don't have to take yourself out of out of this here and i'm like i'm almost like imagining the person like wait a minute like at first i would have just turned you know what i'm really imagining what i'm really taking in i have this thing that for the longest my eyes were like just messing up with me and every time i would like look at my laptop i would get these big headaches so over time i started like listening to more podcasts, listening to like more audiobooks, so on and so forth. Uh, and I told myself, I told other people around, I'm just like a great audio learner. Like that, this is just it. Uh, and so I went to an eye doctor who performed a couple of different tests and they're like, oh, your eyes aren't teaming properly. So I can imagine that when you put something in front of you to read, it like, it becomes more work. 
And so you just adapted and you took on this this audio thing. But both of those things are totally, you're just as good reading as you are with the audio. I see something coming up online for you. What's, what's coming out? Right. Well, the other piece of that is, and this is what happens when you change a belief, when you change something, one of those like uh, life and death fires in your mind, right? Even though they seem like little things, they're, they're not little things to you. And so when you change one of those things or you take, put one of those fires out, you have more possibilities. So now you have the possible, the, the fire for you in that case was this one thing is not working for me. It's causing me pain. So I'm going to avoid it. So it limited your world. It, you chose to move into another thing to get the information, which was great because you have a curious mindset, I'm guessing. And so, so you had that. But then and this is the benefit of having all those like fires, those little triggers, is that you pivoted in another way to look at the world in a different way. And when you put that fire out, now you can open up and you have access to two things. So now you have access to being able to, let's look at the computer for as long as you want. And you're used to and comfortable with listening to the audiobooks and listening to the podcast. So you've expanded your horizon. So one of these things that you know, people get all in their place, like, oh, I've had so much trauma, these terrible things. I feel like I'm so blah all the time. When you heal that stuff, when you transform that stuff in your brain, it makes your abilities wider. It, may, it gives you superpowers. So you swung all the way over here. You became a really good audio learner because you had to, because mm -hmm looking at the computer was dangerous it caused a headache right so now that you can do both you never would have probably become such a good audio learner had you not had that fire giving you the headache so this is the benefit of these negative experiences that create these um these fires, if you will, these life or death things in the nervous system, when you can transform them, you become more powerful. You become who you're born to be, right? These things don't happen, they happen to us. But if you choose to, you can believe that they happen for us. So I would not have the capacity to do what I do had I not held the hand of my best friend who was a Vietnam junkie while he passed away from an overdose at the age of when I was four years old. I would not have the capacity to do what I do if I had not experienced, you know, abandonment and so many other traumas on top of that. But because I took the time and I unwound all of that stuff and I did so much of it, so y'all don't have to, that I can hold the space in a way that a lot of people can't. I know a lot of people, I, I've seen some coaches on there and I, I'm out there and I've had some conversations with them. And I'm just like, wow, if I had come to you when I needed what you say you're offering, you would never have been able to even touch the surface of what I needed. And because I have such a breadth of experience, I can hold the space if you just need a little help. I can hold the space if you need a lot of help and get you to that place where you can access your own superpowers, where you can go into work and the boss could be two inches from your face, screaming and yelling and pointing at your finger, pointing their finger at your face and you would be perfectly calm. And five minutes later, you wouldn't even give it a second thought. And that's powerful, what that can create in your life. Allowing some time to let that just like sink in here, right? Because uh, I like to be in a place where your nervous system is not activated and you are in that place of calm. And uh, I like, I get it. I get like, like it takes, it takes steps, it takes experience and it takes having worked through it yourself to be able to be able to, not everyone has 
Like it's one thing to yeah. it's one thing to have heard things. It's one thing to understood to understand things from like um from a third person perspective, but then to actually have gone through the process and to like and like what I'm getting about to you is like in order for you to be in the place that you are in right now, you've had to develop those tools. You've had to you put yourself in places. You're you're like one of one of my one of the things that put a smile on my face and it doesn't like it makes perfect sense is when you're like I um uh, you're talking about the question that was that was posing like I pondered the question for myself, you know, uh and just to like look at like listening to that part of just like opening yourself to experiences and then being able to create the space for people so you can definitely use what that person needs at that time because they are so different to help them move forward again. Like I feel like like I get that like that that's what you're about. That's what you do. I'm glad that you claim it as well right so it's like so we can we can see we can experience and we can grow from it so Janae, like i think i think this is actually a good place for us to start bringing this conversation to a close because I, I feel like there are well that yeah, this is conversation we'll continue opening up the relationship but i feel like there's there's wonderful things that like that are in place right now um as i think about this what comes to my mind is like it's two things actually three here we go the first one here is like for someone who is out there that is that's like feeling what what you're talking about? That's like I'm ready to be a superhero. Who like who's like mm -hmm. I am like I am I'm ready to like l start to create a different path and to see more possibility and to move out of that place of like my nervous system is keeping me in this in this narrow place. But I'm I'm ready to go again to like ex to expand beyond this and to make my job or make my work like more of like what I want or who I want to be while I'm there. Like. Uh, I, I hear you have a lot of tools. I hear you have a lot of experience with this year. What's the best way for someone to like go and, and walk down or continue down that journey with you? The best way would be to have a conversation with me, jump on a level up call with me. And the thing you get from that is we really break down what's going on at work and what are the things that you need to be able to show up as you want to show up. And I know when we feel like hell at work, we're not showing up as who we want to be. We're not showing up as our best self because we're on edge. We're feeling stress and you just cannot be your most powerful self when you're stressed when the nervous system is stressed. So you could go to elevatebookacall.com, open up your browsers right now <laughs> and type in elevatebookacall.com. It's a free session. We get to go over what are the sticking points at work? What are the patterns that are happening, right? Remember the, the unconscious mind is trying to keep you safe. It's trying to keep you in those patterns and half of those patterns, most people aren't even aware of. So we'll go over all of that. I have a great system that will help people out of that place. And if it feels in alignment, we'll go over that system. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I want to make sure we, we capture that because uh, as you're talking, like there's, I, I also get a chance to spend a lot of time with different coaches and different people who are like in a I, with people who are uplifting people and I get I get the depth of your experience I get the depth of your uh your application and your care you know uh so I, I really want to make sure we're creating the space for that the second question I have for you here would be if there was one takeaway or like you know you don't have to limit yourself to one but if there was one takeaway that you want uh, people to walk away from this conversation with it might be a takeaway or it might be a question that you want them to to walk away from this conversation what would that be your experience is your experience. Nobody else has had your experience. It's okay that you feel something different than everybody else because you are a unique, beautiful human being. And all of those things that you're feeling, all of those things that you have been through, they give you unique, special superpowers that nobody else can have. And so when someone tells you to just get over it, let do your best to let that just roll off your shoulder because they don't know. They don't know what it's like to be you. I just have one last question here. And this is the way I like to end most of my conversations now. Uh, and I call it the time capsule question, right? 
Um, and the, the the time capsule question looks at looks at the, from this perspective, right? Right now we're having this conversation in this real this moment right here. And I feel you in your power. I feel you in alignment. And I feel you like on this like ongoing tracks of, of continued success, both for you and your clients. And there may come a time in the future where there's a lesson that you know, something that is true for you in this current moment that you may need to be reminded of and only you can do it. So if there was something that you wanted to leave for yourself, almost like a time capsule here, what's a message that you would leave for yourself to come back to you in the future? Because you wanted big things, you had to learn a lot first before you would succeed. We have it. There we have it. Janae, I am really glad that we had this conversation. I'm I uh, I'm excited for people to check out the podcast, but more like and more importantly, like, to actually come and do the work with you. Like I see lives being changed by just like coming in and like taking that step and starting to see and collect new evidence and to like start to change changing their filters and beyond. So uh, I'm appreciative of you. I'm appreciative of the work that you do uh, and how, also how you show up here. Thank, Thank you once you. again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody listening. Can I share my thing that I always like to sign off my show with? Please do. When we feel good about who we are and what we do, we create joy and elevate humanity. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just take that in and we'll see you later on. Be well.